This is March 18, 1986, Julie Strong interviewing Marie Gilbert and John Hargis about Elizabeth Glasgow and other entrepreneurs on East 6th Street at the turn of the century. Uh, it would take some time to Put go together. through it, no, to find it. Oh. And um, What type of information do you have on Gibbons? Articles, news articles. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And I have one specifically, and I'll write his name. Okay. And uh, I'll try to do that tomorrow. Okay. Um, but generally, I, see, I, I don't know much about Dr. Gibbons. He's such a big man that I've saved him almost to the very last. So whatever you say is going to educate me. I know he was a political force in Austin, far blacks, for a good number of years. He was. Can you tell us anything about that aspect of his life? Well, tomorrow I'll have whatever I would say today, but okay. just off the cuff, in a summarization manner, mm -hmm. um, I'd say that he was a recognized leader. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some unsung heroes and heroines, and people didn't know generally about what they were doing from time to time, but we knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community was aware, black, white, and brown, and he worked with all groups mm -hmm. and was a recognized, uh, not only a leader in uh, politics, but in religion, in uh, community development, and... Um, it helped many people get started as entrepreneurs in Austin. I'd like to hear about some. Well, I'll have it for okay. you. <coughs> uh, do you have any personal experiences tucked up in your head that you know of ways that he helped people start Well, he businesses? helped me through uh, association in uh, educational areas. Mm -hmm. How do you mean? Uh, I'm about to say that um, he worked closely with Samuel Houston College mm -hmm. and Tillotson College before they merged, mm -hmm. before the two institutions became Houston Tillotson College. Mm -hmm. He was a great force in organizing groups to uh, consummate this project and work diligently in uh, promoting uh, the merger. Mm -hmm. um, I have all this mm -hmm. in articles, and, and uh, had I known it, probably I would have had some of it for you today. But you, I'll just be glad to share well, it with you. you. <laughs> I'm sorry I surprised you. It wasn't until after I left that I realized, and someone told me to talk to be sure to talk to you about Dr. Gibbons since I last saw you. So. And um, another person who knows about him, maybe you'd like to have her name, is Dr. Connie. Mm -hmm. I've spoken with Dr. Yearwood. Y. Connor. Mm -hmm. that's, that's her name. Mm -hmm. She was a Yearwood before she married. Yearwood is a maiden name. She was my neighbor just across the street mm -hmm. for more than 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we know Dr. Gibbons. Um, uh, we knew him personally, and we know of his great work. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say is his major area of contribution? Well, I can't say Austin? that they were major because he took them so all many. along. You know, uh -huh. they were interrelated. Uh -huh. And uh, for instance, if they were going to have a groundbreaking or a, um, a ribbon cutting. Uh, he, uh, my nickname, my family nickname is Baby, and I never knew my name, my given name. He'd say, uh, Baby, grab your coat and your hat. I want you to go with me. They're going to have a ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. And he'd come by and pick me up, and away we would go. Mm -hmm. uh, he involved me in many programs that he had. And um, now when was this, Dr. Gilbert? Uh, well, it you was were in the 60s. Uh -huh. Uh, I wasn't too young then, but I, I certainly was uh, young enough to participate in these uh, political programs. I want to show you. My husband was uh, Lewis Gilbert, and 
he died in uh, 76. Mm -hmm. And this is an article that was written in the, what was the name of the paper then? Either the call of, no, the Tribune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is his obituary. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. He worked under ten governors. <laughs> he did. What was his? Well, you can read it. Funeral services were held at Grady Mount Zion Baptist Church. The Reverend M. W. Bacon officiated and died on his birthday, May 13th, at the local hospital. Friends from all denominations from various points of his joy in the salvation of the life of Lord and Thanksgiving. Music furnished by Jimmy Hunter, directed to see by Heath Force and bringing that sound back to fire. Under the direction of Mrs. Harry Hardin. Prayer given by Reverend Freddie Dixon. Offered a litany, which invited congregational participation of Reverend Hart Hart Scholar and Reverend H. Miles. Read from the Old and New Testaments. Appreciation given by Mary E. Jones, Mary Johnson, Glenn Lovely, Dr. John King, and Dr. I.B. Loud. Services from the direction of King Terrence Watcher. He was a charter member. Yep, it was a charter member of Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church and Mount mm -hmm. Grand Lodge, AF and AM. He was a 33 degree Mason. For many years, he served as a Pullman porter. Huh, and traveled extensively throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. He was employed at the state capitol during the terms of service mm -hmm. of governors. Pat Neff, William Hobby, Dan, Rudy, James Allred, Debbie Leo, Daniel Coates Stevenson, both for Jester, Class General, Alan Shivers, and Dolph Briscoe. He had tenure there, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He was a custodian. And under uh, Governor Briscoe, he was one of the car guards. I think they only employed two black car guards, and uh -huh. he was one. Uh -huh. In March 76, he was honored at Cincinnati United Methodist Church for contributions as a leading citizen of Boston Union. Recently, he was honored for meritorious service at the state capitol, where displaying the rotunda portrayed some of his accomplishments. Also mm -hmm. honored by People's Business College for outstanding service in the community. He ever survived by his wife, Emily, daughter, Annie Ruth, grandchildren, sister, brother, and nephew, niece, and host of both. Mm -hmm. So he and Dr. Gibbons worked closely. I wanted to show you that to, to uh -huh. let you know that I don't remember many projects and uh, uh, accomplishments, but uh, I have. Uh, a record of them, just mm -hmm. as I have that uh, long picture there of some of my work in the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. I have those things over at another address, okay. and I'll have to go I over there and go it through. If you them. Have the time. We yeah. could go with you, or one of us, and just we could do it as we went, and then you wouldn't have to go over there and try to figure. You know, we could help with some of them. I certainly would appreciate it. Okay. And I'll have to see what time tomorrow. Now, today uh, is Tuesday, and 1 o'clock was our appointment. 4 o'clock, I have an appointment with the Youth Employment Service. At 5.30, I'm going to the reception for Linda Gale. And uh, every day is like that, you know. And I have to um, take my show and keep my work going at the Austin Community College, as well as uh, KLVJ. So I won't know until tonight when I go to my desk in those places and see what's on the agenda. Okay. It's going to be hard for you tomorrow with the NEH proposal. I know. Because it's just it. terrible the way the life we live. We're, we're, we're hoping we'll be put by you, but we're not possible. Mm -hmm. I'm writing a proposal for another project that has to go to the National Gallery. I know what you mean. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. what about 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock? Um, Will you have picked up your children there? I wouldn't be able to go at four. Uh, Five. I have my children after school. Could you could you go late afternoon with her, Martha? Yeah, and I think I could go at four. What about unless that? we get into a really sore lot and I'm still there typing mm -hmm. and stuff. See, would that's you, my only problem. Is would you prefer to call her tonight and schedule time? Tonight I won't know anymore. Uh, I won't know until tomorrow at noon. I think it would be safer if we just schedule time on Friday. Oh, I can go. Well, that's all right. Ooh, Friday at 11.30, quality in, speaking Friday 4. Oh, it's just... For next week. Wednesday is just my day uh, to, of this week that I have more time than any other time. Mm -hmm. Well, we could technically set it before, and, but I... 
because I need someone with glaucoma to help me look through these mm -hmm. things, and I appreciate you saying that. Otherwise, I don't know when I can get to it. Well, why don't we try it for, and I'll have to call you if, if I am on this, if I have, we have not got this thing done. She's going to call you to confirm in any case. Well, I understand, but I mean, I, I it won't be here. I have to go to another address I said about five well, minutes ago. Pick, I could pick you up. No, I go in my own car because when oh, I go there, I have to go other places. Oh, okay. And uh, we'll, I'll meet you there at 1116, both of you, if you'd like to write this address. 1116 okay. East 12. Well, I'm really worried now something's going to happen. I won't be able to get in touch with them for And then I don't think we should say it. We should tomorrow. not say it to well, what about in 5 o'clock? Tomorrow is such a day for me of, of not rushing and having to go to anything. If we could just spend uh, one hour there looking, that would be fine. Well, just one hour, uh, 30 minutes. Oh, well, I, I want to do it. It, it, it. See, I have a partner, and we're working on this proposal. If I announce to him at 3.45 when we have 20 more minutes of typing that I have to leave, he doesn't I have to finish. Honey, you don't have to yeah. make all that. I understand. I'm okay, well, accustomed to that. I, but I'm just saying of, that you well, offered to do it, and, yeah, and I'd like to do it tomorrow. But if I can't, I don't yeah. know when. Okay, why don't you call me, Martha? If your day gets tomorrow, yeah. If the day gets tomorrow, you call me, and I'll have a call today. Okay. You can go at 4? No. Well, I want you to make it 4.30, so you okay. won't be rushed, honey. Okay. Uh, and the, you, you have to pick up your baby. Well, I don't try to do parts. <laughs> you work hard when I do. Goodness. All right, four, Volunteer to any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what time? I mean, where? 11, 16, East 12. Yeah, we were in the middle of talking. 4.30 tomorrow. Now, if Martha gets snarled, which she might, she's going to call me, and I will meet you there in any case. Okay. And whenever she can get through, she just puts in 15 minutes. And when you see the place, you, you, you. I mean, if you can, you'll see why I appreciate your saying you'll help me because it's in a holy mess, looking through papers and boxes. And okay. But uh, to have it authentic, then already mm -hmm. written and. So wonderful composed, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, from month to month somebody's here asking me something. I ask them to look over those <laughs> things and look look in my scrapbooks, and they don't have to talk much mm -hmm. to me. They have mm -hmm. whatever they are looking That's for. right. That's right. It's very expedient to have something already written down. It is. Yeah. Um, someone told me that, I just want to ask you if you remember anything about this incident. All I know is that someone told me that Dr. Gibbons participated in uh, the effort to establish the swimming pool and get it built at Rosewood Recreation Center. Do you know anything about uh, well, that? Well, Dr. Connor can tell you about that. Okay. All right. I had spoken with Dr. Connor last week, and she said that she talked to me more about Dr. Gibbons. I hadn't gotten back to her, and I wanted to talk to you, too. What about Dr. Delashwa? What can you tell us about him? Well, well I Delashua. told I mentioned what I, uh -huh. I knew the way he helped you. That's do right, you, personally. Uh -huh, do and you, and uh, John, my cousin, told you how he helped him and the family. And he mentioned his grandmother and that they were in business at the same time on 6th Street during the same period. Uh -huh. did, I didn't hear John say that he did that for the last time. I missed that. See, we did, if we didn't have it on tape, and I wasn't taking, sitting down taking the notes. Mm -hmm. Through inspiration, he spoke, said he knew about him. And mm -hmm. And uh, he attested to some of the things that I said. Yeah. Uh huh. He just uh, commented. I wish I don't know where on earth the child is. I hope he's in the house. I do too. I'm going to call you back later on and find out. Maybe that's it. Thank you. Including my description of um, as a youngster of uh, what he uh, meant to the uh, community and one was uh, uh, inspiration and I think the other was uh, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, he owned the business and we thought it was just great to be mm -hmm. able to go from uh, 
1700 East 11th Street, where I lived near Tillotson College, and go down to the four or 500 block of East 6th Street and have an ice cream soda and socialize. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a different 6th Street to what it is now. <laughs> it's a street uh, that uh, mostly blacks enjoy. And his drugstore was a favorite place of youngsters, mm-hmm. for youngsters. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what I said the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, is it your impression that Dr. Delashba particularly liked youngsters? Is that why the youngsters came into his store? Why was it such a place with youngsters and, and not people? Well, he's age? never hurried, and um, upstairs, I think now, I'm not so sure, there were offices of physicians, one of whom was Dr. Dr. Crawford, I believe, mm-hmm. and um, the older people appreciated him, so some of that rubbed off on the youngsters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We were there not to particularly have prescriptions filled, but uh, <coughs> to await our parents and all as they went up for consultation. and. Uh-huh. 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 And he was a pharmacist, a registered pharmacist. Mm-hmm. He was just a role model for young people. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, he it exemplified his um, being able to relate to young people. Mm-hmm. Would you say that Delashwa's drugstore was the place for youngsters? One of the places. One of the places. Yes. Where were the other places for youngsters? Well, they were near the East Austin area. Oh. Uh huh. So this was the downtown the site. Downtown, this was the downtown. That's Street. it exactly. Uh-huh. Where then did the older folks, the people my age, go on East Sixth Street, or did they go to East Sixth Street? Well, they enjoyed the drugstore too. Oh, they did. They enjoyed uh-huh. sipping cream sodas. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. There's no separation there of interest, uh-huh. but there was, as I said, um, a so place of enjoyment for both adults and young mm-hmm. students. So his clientele was not exclusively exclusively young. He attracted some older folks, oh, too. Oh, certainly. Mm-hmm. Was because he himself, I understand, and I'll try to get the news article for you, where Dr. Jennings um, became interested in Dr. Delashua and was the cause of his being uh, a successor to his business. Dr. Jennings owned Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the place Mm -hmm. prior, but in some way, I don't recall all that, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Delashua attracted him, Mm -hmm. and uh, either through hereditary will, Somehow, Dr. Delasha became the owner mm-hmm. so you think because of Dr. Jennings' uh-huh. interest in him. Uh-huh. But I, I can't recall all that. Yeah. I, I wasn't an infant, but I was too young uh-huh. to try to mm-hmm. remember all that. Mm-hmm. I just heard our parents and, and older folk talking. So about. Dr. Jennings could have acted not only as a mentor for Delashwa, but he might also have... Um, done something more tangible for him. He might have contributed to his education or he might have contributed to his ability to buy that drugstore. He might have even bequeathed that drugstore to him. That's I think what you'll find all what mm-hmm. you're saying mm-hmm. um, in black and white. Mm-hmm. It's recorded. Mm-hmm. And somewhere it will offer you authentic information on what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. Mm-hmm. I've, at least I've given you a clue to mm-hmm. it. That's right. Yeah, it's a good clue. Where else could people go on 6th Street for socializing? I don't know of any other place. Mm -hmm. That was one of the places. Other places were in the East Austin area. And uh, the schools and the churches. uh, Mm -hmm. That's the environment in which I was reared, you know. We we didn't have all the places that we (laughs) enjoy now. So schools and churches, how would you rate the environment of a school and church for socializing? versus this drugstore? Did, did most everybody do most of their socializing at home and in schools and churches? Or 
I can't account for what everybody did. What about you? <laughs> you. But you see, uh, Dr. Lashua's mother was a teacher in the Austin uh -huh. Independent School District. Uh -huh. And uh, I think Dr. Lashua was an only child, I'm not mm -hmm. so sure. Mm -hmm. But I do recall that she was a teacher. And uh, he, as I, enjoyed uh, school and church activities. Mm -hmm. So that made him known in the community. His mother was a teacher. And That's he had it. Drugs so it was just a place where everybody felt comfortable. That's right. You mentioned the other day when we were here that the north side of the street of the 400 block, you did not walk down. And you were not supposed to go across to the other I side of the street. I didn't say that. I don't recall having said that, but listen. Uh, John said, or was it John? Uh huh. That he knew Mr. Wright, Julius Wright, mm -hmm. who had a pool hall. And I said, Oh, I don't know mm -hmm. anything about that. And that was yeah. on the north side of Sixth Street. Uh -huh. I, I didn't go over there. You didn't go to the north side? I know, I didn't. I didn't have any business. No over reason. There. It's not that you were prohibited from going on no, the north side. It's no. just that there was nothing over there to interest you. No. Okay, I misunderstood what you said. That's I, right. I, I picked that up, but I thought, well, see, I've heard No, it. and I said, I recall saying, be sure to interview Miss Mildred Ramble because mm -hmm. I think she still owns some property on the north side of 6th Street, and she can tell you all about it. She is one of the most personable ladies I've met throughout my uh, travels and around Austin and the state. She is connected with, and I asked him to help me out, I said, is it Fuller Mercer Sheffield? And mm -hmm. he said, yes, the mm -hmm. funeral home. Yes, ma'am. Now, that. if you want first-hand information, she'll give it she to you. It. Okay. And she's still living, and she's so sweet. Mm -hmm. But how old is she? Do I don't have an no idea how old she is. I would like for you to look at this picture and tell me if you recognize anyone. Okay. Let me see. Lord and mercy. We know that picture was taken in front of the old post office building that's downtown on 5th Street. That's um, now the University uh, System building. 6th is going on west. I recognize Mr. G.W. Norman right here. Uh-huh. It's a Oh, and there's his name up there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what else is. <laughs> Look at these hats and shoes and caps. Do you see you can in that, Is that Dr. Elisha? I don't know. I don't know either. And uh, this looks like a member of my church, uh, Langdon. V. H. Langdon? Mm -hmm. And he's V. H. There Langdon yet. would probably be able to tell us if that was E. H. Langdon. How'd you know the initials were E. H. I talked about Dr. Langdon, Mr. Langdon. Oh, I see. Well, then. Listen, I've talked to is that 40 he? people. Is that he? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he didn't recognize him? Oh, I, I didn't show them that, that picture. I just got that picture yesterday or day before. Oh, this is beautiful. Um, he's the treasurer of Wesley United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I recognize him and Mr. Norman. They recognize others, but I... I is that, um, does that gentleman look like that's the last one? That's just like him. Does it look like that one in the corner? It looks like him. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. And he is a resolution, Dr. Uh -huh. Marie Hill. If I you can read name. my resolution, you should get that from, because in that, I, I brought out many you told things. Uh-huh. Well, that's why I was asking you about Delashwa, because I saw your name on this. I said, thought it was because Betty Poole told you to see me. She also did, but I she gave me this, and I said, Well, did she, she I give you my resolution? She said no. she'd keep it forever. Did she? No, she didn't. She didn't want to give it away then. <laughs> no, but she just to make a Xerox copy yeah. of it. 
No, she didn't and that's what I'd be looking for tomorrow, uh -huh. see? Good. But but you get that, and you'll get... I got it, huh? All right. Good. All right, so you think this might be E.H. Langdon? I think it is. I okay, know. Well, we'll, yes. we'll check. Now, um, in speaking with... I spoke with Mr. Norman the other day. You did? Yeah, when John was here. Oh, I didn't hear I said he said. used to let people have money, barred people who were, who were in poor financial uh -huh. circumstances, and he uh, would borrow money and charge them rates of interest uh -huh. and so forth. They had a little business on the side. Right. I mentioned that the other day. I thought we were talking about L.D. Lyons in that context. We did, and also uh -huh. all of them who had money, Mr. Lyons, Dr. Lyons, people were having a pretty hard times, so they just had a little business on the side. Uh -huh. Who else? Mr. Norman and uh, Mr. Lyons, Dr. Lashua. Uh -huh. I, I can't. Uh -huh. So they would, uh, this was a service that they provided to people. They would, borrow, they would loan money to them and charge them interest. Small rates, uh -huh. low rates uh -huh. of interest. Now when was this, Dr. Gilbert? You said people were having hard times then. What do you mean by then? Are we talking about the 20s or the 30s? Are we talking about the teens? You didn't you don't remember the teens. I don't remember the teens. Uh -huh, the Way back teens. then. Oh, I told you I hadn't finished high school. Right. According to the figures you had there, 1918 something to 1920. Yes, ma'am. And I said, well, I hadn't finished high school yeah. then. Uh -huh. But I remember very distinctly. Okay, during My the father teens. died, as I said the other day, when I was quite small. Everything that was done for me was done by a widowed mother, and uh -huh. she didn't want to marry them because she didn't know how a stepfather would treat me. Uh -huh. And I didn't know we were, well, I didn't know so much about poverty. I was an only child, and I got most of the things that I needed. So um, if there had been a large family, 14 or 15, like some of these other people, maybe uh, I could say that uh, uh, I didn't have this and I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But I had most of the things that I needed. Well, during this period of time that you But just to now, I, I don't know about the oil situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I know that uh, Texas time. is having a pretty tough time at this time, okay. not being a direct party to it. Right. So yes, I was I surrounded with knowledge. Mm -hmm. the, um, they paid me 50 cents a month to play for the Sunday school at Grand Chapel AME Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was just so much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'd forget to give me the 50 cents. And they'd find a little girl in the middle of the floor there saying, I want my money. And someone would say, and they're still living, and when I go to Grand Chapel now, and uh, at times relate the story to the youngsters. Some of the older people will say, yes, I remember that. <laughs> I remember those days. They'd say, give that child her 50 cents so we can go on with Sunday school. <laughs> and as I grew older, I played for the junior choir, then I played for the senior choir. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where my enjoyment came in church and in schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and occasionally at the drugstore. Mm -hmm. But I was kept so busy with things that my mother would leave for me to do so mm -hmm. she'd know what I was doing and where mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. that I didn't, well, I didn't, I must say that I had a beautiful, wonderful mother. And I thank God for the leadership and the parental guidance she gave me. Mm -hmm. Well, so what you So uh, what I'm saying is, Sure, we were all, the America was having a hard mm -hmm. time, but mm -hmm. I and we're talking didn't about realize that I was so much in need of yeah, didn't, so Yeah, you didn't much. feel it real directly. No. Well, was this during both the 19-teens and the 1920s that we're talking about? It was during the 30s for the most part. Okay. When I was ready. Now, this is it, not on me. It's on Dr. Delashua, see? Uh -huh. And somebody's doing a story on me, and I, and I hope maybe you will or someone later. So, I can go into all that. You see, blacks could not study business education why here not? in Austin. Why not? Now, don't ask me why. I see that's another thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. That was just the system. Mm -hmm. We couldn't attend the University of Texas. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go to the business colleges. But my mother had the foresight to send me to a private school 
Tillotson College, mm -hmm. all white teachers. And there they too saw that I had an inc inclination, aptitude, interest in business mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. And I got my foundation. Mm -hmm. And um, in 47, I opened a business college. What was that? People's Business People. College. You know, it's in that article. Yeah, I've been hearing about Peoples, and I'm so glad to know who the founder was. <laughs> well, founder director. That. See that big shield up there? Uh-huh. It reads, founder director of People's uh -huh. Business College. But you see, uh, my life is so much like Dr. Delashwa's life, reared as an only child. And, mm -hmm and having received his education at Meharry, I believe. Uh, That's right. But I see, mm -hmm. and um, mother sent me away. Uh, I couldn't study here, and I had to go to the University of Denver. First black to receive, receive a Master of Business Administration degree in business with a major in economics. Mm -hmm. And um, Oh, it's just beautiful. Texas Southern open, come on down and open this school now. And I started with nine students. Now there are more than 2,000 students in the mm -hmm. School of Business mm -hmm. and all. It just overwhelms me when I even think about it. That's right. It's really So, right. so uh, I've been surrounded lavishly with love and protection mm -hmm. and guidance in the interest of Austin friends, black, white, and brown. Right now, when I'm in need of money, uh, they don't say, well, scratch it, how much money do you need? When I go to the M Bank, how much do you want, Marie? Mm -hmm. See, that has come about because of the... Uh, the respect for you and your No, 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 the sacrifices my mother made that I didn't have sense enough to realize. She laid the foundation. But I wasn't old enough to know of the difficulties mm -hmm. she was experiencing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. No, I think all children were protected uh, and are protected from that sort of knowledge. I would like very much for you to, to look at this list with me and see if you recognize the names of other businessmen on the block. This is a list that I've compiled by going through the city directories. These are all the names of the gentlemen and the women who operated businesses on the 400 block in our 30 year study Black, period. white, and brown? No ma'am, just black. I, They're about 70 or 75 names. I looked at this other day. Did you see, did you look at, were we able and to look at the And that's when I saw list? Mr. Norman. Uh-huh. No, Norman is not on that list because he wasn't in the 400 Who block. Who is T.C. Lashwa? Well that's Dr. Delashwa's father. Oh. He didn't go by Delashwa, apparently, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. those few years. And I didn't, he ought to have on here Hancock, or he, he was, um... I do have Hancock. Yeah, but... Hugh and Martha? Yeah, but um, the ones I'm talking about are not on here. And his, his daughter is a survivor. She gave $10,000 just recently to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Her father was a uh, plumber, and he lived on um, just two blocks from where you're to meet me tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, you know, um, and she can tell you so much about most of these people. Mm -hmm. uh, she, um, you know, from that gift of ten thousand, know, she is very comfortable financially. But uh, I'm talking about her father and the path he uh, paved, you know, for her. Mm -hmm. And his name isn't here. But I'd just like for you to talk to her. Mm -hmm. She is um, very highly skilled in music. And her name is listed in the directory. What is her name? Carrie, C A R R I E. Mm -hmm. And her last name is H A N C O C K. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason. And, and, and you want, she will give you first hand information on Dr. Lasher, Dr. Given. Good. Oh, that's good. She's in the and she's still living. Under just Carrie. She, she 
Well, her husband was um, Spencer, S P E N C E R. Okay. You know what street she lives on? Either Tillotson or Tillotson Avenue or Hamilton. I think okay. she lives on Hamilton. But you will never regret having talked to her. Uh -huh. Good. It's a good lead. So all that I can answer is she. Uh huh. You see any other names there that you recognize? Do you know anything about a Carrie Seals, a hairdresser? No, I didn't ever know her. Mm -hmm. But um, this Miss, um, what is the lady's name? I told you, the mortuary. Um, Rambo? Rambo, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I think she was married to Maroni. Oh, well, she got someone knocking Maybe at your door. Maybe that's um, John. Oh, let's see. I hope so. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, bless your heart. I mean, but. There's a pool hall. This is about two blocks from Red River. Okay, that's my uh, grandmother's restaurant. Oh, oh that. isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Hey, dirt, Mr. Hargis. Yes. This is what Isn't I call that hey. they, they, they couldn't give me the address, but what happened is it was called Glasgow's Restaurant, and that's Oh, in there. This is Elizabeth Glasgow. That's Elizabeth Betty. Glasgow. Wonderful. That's Isn't that daughter. great? That's her daughter. That's her daughter. That is and Alberta, then. I think her daughter's uh, name Bertha. is Alberta. They call her Bertha. Uh-huh. And this is son Lonnie. Uh -huh. They couldn't tell me the address, but they said that Lyons at his place on Red River and 6th Street, and they were two blocks west of there, mm -hmm. on the right-hand side, and it was near the pool hall. On the right-hand side as you're approaching Congress? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's... On the north side. So that's her, right. So that's uh -huh. her, and this is her. Oh, these are wonderful, Mr. Oh, Hardy. That's why I'm late. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Oh, that's right. <laughs> If you would be responsible for giving like me, but that's what that is. Well, I tell you what, we're really looking for photographs and artifacts. Well, I'm, still, I'm still looking. Um, I mean, could we use these? In, oh, in you can use those. Just, just so you know, that you can use them. I'm just looking to see if I can't find more. And since she died June the 18th. That's what she mm -hmm. Oh, this is her. Uh-huh. That's, that's her. her. Uh-huh. Now, of course, I have a lovely picture of her with five generations. You do? That includes me. No. That'd be a good picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm Don't you really? You see my ego? Yeah. <laughs> that's all oh, right. I have a lovely picture. You're right. <laughs> and, uh, you just have to use this in the exhibit. No, there's five generations. Which really? Which is very unusual. Uh-huh. When yes. was the picture taken? It was pr prior to 1950, obviously. Uh, let's see. Well, Mark, nice let's see. But I have that one. I don't have a with me, but I have that one. It's a picture of her, her, uh, her daughter, and then her daughter's husband, her daughter's son, and then his, his daughter, and then my cousin's son. There are five generations mm here -hmm. in the Yes, it is very unusual. Do we think you need to sit over here closer so we can pick yes. him up yes. on the microphone? Bring that over here. I thought you were going to punish me for... Oh, I thought you were going to punish For being late? Here, you sit in the corner? I thought you were going to punish me for being it's late. It's lighter so. and... Uh, so I was sitting in my corner with chest down. Oh, you so would enjoy much. that. Well, let's put this thing in the and middle. You know what? I had um, some friends here that other church women, you know, and I just reach over there and mm -hmm. say a few words and reach again. They say, <laughs> we're better hurry because... Marie's going to eat up everything. Well, I enjoy it too. <laughs> well, I'll take a bank then right away. <laughs> well, Marie, you should have sound um, refreshing on the radio, Sandy. Did you enjoy my show? You're, um, you, 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 you seem to, uh, well, you always articulate well, but you seem to have been so more comfortable and at peace. 
Why aren't you sweet to say that? You did. You did. Uh, it was very unusual. What was the show about? Uh, Mr. Evans, the, uh, who's a poet, has uh, once said that um, he had used his prose and put it in poems. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hmm. Is that a call from the council? Well, your program, you, 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 you have a good program this Sunday, but, uh, and, and you're well, well prepared, but it just seemed like that you had just so much confidence, and you, you seem to keep so resting peaceful. Maybe this place has I, I thought about it. I, 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 that was the thing that came to my mind, but I said, well, I'll let her lead up to it. Yeah. If you're not going to be too busy tomorrow, we should join us at 1116 East 12. I have glaucoma, and I, I we're going to try to look for these newspaper clippings. I can't promise you. I'm I'm in the middle of a Texas X reunion. I know you are. And a uh, little uh, few uh, problems. But uh, what time you need tomorrow? Okay. Well, okay. If we can just stay there, it would be helpful to me. You don't have to turn up. I'll try. I won't promise you, but I will definitely try. You put one time down this time? Where's your day timer? Hmm? Where's your day timer? Whatever. Give me one of those. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I know. I then, can't then, you, then you're committed, you know. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, you are. This way I said, I lost a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. no, I, mean, I, I, I was coming early. I said, well, I'll come by and I'll check the me before. But I saw two pieces, two, two notes. One said two o'clock, one said one o'clock. That's all right. Tell us what you learned about Elizabeth Glasgow. Uh, what did I learn about her? She died June 8, 1950, you said? Mm-hmm. The, the lady who gave me the picture is probably the most resourceful person you could use. And that would, that would have, let's see, um, Mrs. Glasgow would have been her, Mrs. Glasgow would, would be on Helen's grandmother? Aunt Helen, the one who, Lynn McCauley? No, Aunt Helen, Aunt Helen, uh, no, oh, oh, no, Aunt, 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 uh, Helen Glasgow. Don't forget Miss Helen McCauley. No, 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 no she, 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 she's the one who I remember. Yes, I remember her. She taught in AISD. Mm -hmm. Miss Glasgow's grandmother. Mm -hmm. Miss Glasgow's daughter. But, but, but Helen, Helen was the one who was a granddaughter. Granddaughter, right. Okay, Helen, Helen, Helen Glasgow, and the telephone number is 472 Two, three, nine, one. Okay. You can just use my name in vain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was Helen Glasgow Lee? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Helen McCauley, is Helen Glasgow the restaurateur's that's granddaughter? Uh, uh, that's Bertha. That's her that, that was Bertha Glasgow's daughter, wasn't she? I called her Aunt, Aunt Helen. I did, too. I called Aunt Helen and bought me. related, but we were taught. During that time. Wasn't Aunt Helen uh, Aunt, uh, Grandma Rainey's sister? I thought it was a different as night and day. She we don't have to wonder. We can call her. Okay. We can call Helen now. But Helen can tell you. Helen can tell you. I was okay. taught to call people aunt and uncle too, right. even when they weren't related, if they were real dear no. friends of the family. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a real sweet custom. Yeah. Um, so you're suggesting that we we get in touch with Helen Lee. Mm -hmm. It's the best source for Helen Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And these photos came from Helen Lee. Okay. Do you oh, happen to you know? Got the photos. Do you happen to know if she has any other she, she photos or? The only one she had was another one of the Lord in the Day, which wasn't uh -huh. necessary. But uh -huh. at the time, she didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. I, I think that if she starts looking back, she would probably find mm -hmm. some. Are there any? Do you know of any family traditions about why she started the restaurant, or what she did before she? Did the restaurant business? Remember any stories? As far as I know, she was probably worked around the house in mm -hmm. terms of taking care of kids, and this was an opportunity to do something uh, she enjoyed doing cooking. But Helen could probably tell you better. Okay. You recollect that she really did in enjoy cooking. I we all did. <laughs> yeah, I think she enjoyed doing domestic things, that, you know, not working necessarily out because of, with her family and everything. She, I don't, I, I'm not aware of her really being that greatly involved in working out because in those days they really worked in the farms or sharecropping mm -hmm. and oh. and at the home. But she was so old because uh, I remember she was about 105 when she died. Wasn't she? 
She was she was in her hundred when she died and she mm-hmm. was still going strong. Mm-hmm. So all she did was you know, do the washing and you know the bills and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and take care of the cooking and the family. See that's why it's so unusual to me that she started a restaurant right after the turn of the century at a time well, when women There might have been a need. Might, maybe somebody mm-hmm. That's died. what I'm trying to get at. Okay, I don't maybe someone died and mm-hmm. there was a need for income, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the Helen can tell you. Helen can tell you and, and, mm-hmm. and by that time probably the kids were old enough to go on their own. You couldn't you couldn't force them to go uh, and take care of crop. Mm-hmm. Well, by my calculations, by 19, the year 1900, she would be uh, 42. Okay, so she's 42 years old. Her kids are probably in their 20s, mm-hmm. and they're grown at that stage. Mm-hmm. But so she read Alberta and Henry, didn't she? I've not talked to Lucille Crawford. Well, that's and right. There's, and there's another doctor, the, the fellow who just returned and retired a few years ago, who's mm-hmm. involved with the music, you know, the faith group, or the, what do they call it? Uh-huh. It's a group of men who sing. Uh-huh. I have so spoken with him. Also men, of course. Uh-huh. I've spoken with him a couple of times, but I, excuse me, I'm not talking to Lucille Crawford. But she'd be that's very resourceful. She, she would be very uh-huh. resourceful. Oh, I uh-huh. see. She taught me. Well, maybe I better get in touch with her. The reason I didn't call her is because my understanding is that she's a half sister. That her father was not Ishmael Dotson. Ishmael um, Dotson uh, died in nineteen. No one's ever never said anything about it. I mean, whether that's the case or not, we don't. I, I don't know. But out of the Dotson, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, but out of the Dotson, she would be probably the most resourceful. Mm-hmm. Uh, no reflection on Mr. Callum and his wife, but but, but Lucy is greatly involved. And, and it, and it has been involved. Well, we better get in touch with her, Martha, because this is our tailor. Oh yeah, the tailor. Papa, and we have no artifacts or photographs. Of her. Even as a even as a half daughter, if she if she were to end up being that, mm-hmm. I think she would be very resourceful. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Well, Mr. Hurtis, I really appreciate these photographs. Now, how shall we handle this? Um, you just. Put them in somewhere and label them to return them to me, and I'll be responsible. Yes, I have a form that I have gotten from the carver, and I have not made copies of it, but it is a release form. Okay. What we're going to need really is we'll need to send that to you okay. and get you to mail it back with, with uh, permission to use this. I'll be responsible for, the, for, for returning it to the proper people. Okay. Um, Should your name be written on the back? That's where I do not Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, afraid to write afraid on the back. They're held. Mm-hmm. And we need an envelope, maybe, yeah, she, and we could set them in an envelope. I want you to take these. Only on one picture did she have any writing on it. There was no writing on it. Just tell her, I'm afraid to write. Normally, I would write everything down on the picture. But mm-hmm. she, she I'm afraid. Of now, I need to write down your the spelling of your last name and your address. I know we. I think you took it last time, but I didn't take it down. Okay. John. Uh, a, yes. W. H A R. H A R. G I S. Eleven nine one two. What? Brookwood. <laughs> one word. He's way out. He sure is. Sure. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Seven eight seven. Mm-hmm. Five zero. Mm. Three, three, one. I moved as far away as from the family as I could. Three three <laughs> that one. Was just the city. Zero, three. <laughs> eight eight. Okay. If you call Helen, uh, the sooner you call her because she won't remember everything, at least you're going to start thinking. Mm-hmm. And she should be very cooperative. It's something that she wants. Yeah. Okay. I called Alberta West. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Did you mention her name? I think so. I sure hope so. Who was Alberta West? So this is what happened when you. I got a lot of information from her. She was raised by Miss Bicycle. Oh. After oh, her that's mom and dad. Okay. Mm-hmm. After her mom and dad, she moved in with our proprietors in about 1909. And she worked there with her in the restaurant. And she left in 1922. So she was sort of the perfect informant because she knew her grandmother well. She knew the cafe well. And she worked there. 
She left Austin in 1922, so she's in her memories past our study period. <laughs> so we know that she's not getting confused about the 1940s what? versus the 1920s. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's 84 years old. Really? So she. And where is she now? She's in Ogden, Utah. Oh, that was your long distance. One of your long distance calls. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. I thought I got it. Uh huh. One of you gave me your number. Did I call you? I didn't even know we had long distance to take calls out. So you didn't know us? We had a relative to take calls out. That's super. So she was real informative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. That was a great interview, just because she has the age, she had the experience, mm -hmm. she has the memory, she has the ability to recall. She's had surgery on me. Yeah, she. She told me that she had some photographs, but it may be that she has copies of what we have now discovered. At she home. may have some more. She told me that she had a photograph of the interior of the cafe with a round table and mm -hmm. a man holding a tray. Mm -hmm. And Isn't that a woman, woman who was a waitress. So I don't know. So if I don't give you any more, I'm fine with that. That was a great tip. Is she going to send the pictures to me? She told me that she would willingly let us use them. Yes. I suggested that I had that I paid to have them copied or something like that because mm -hmm. I hate to get stuff from far afield, you know. So. Well, I appreciate both of your efforts and your help, both, in, both informative and you've given us good leads. <laughs> you better come on. <laughs> well, I don't even know how I walked in here the other day in the middle of the conversation. You just kind of wandered in. <laughs> I still haven't figured that out. Yeah, I think that you are looking coincidence. Maybe you want to look at this list, Mr. Hargis, and tell us if you have any other relatives on the same screen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we had hit such incredible. I never knew the day would come, would come when I'd be proud of living for relatives on 6th Street. No. <laughs> A vendor. I age thirty five. On Sixth Street and I thirty five. Mm -hmm. He sold watermelons. Mm -hmm. When was it? I don't remember when it was. Nineteen forties, you think? Oh. But his um, mm -hmm. you know, Malda, the barber. Okay. That's his um, daughter. Mm -hmm. So somebody's here in town who yeah. we can ask about. So what was his name? What is his name, Quentin? Her name was Animate Quentin. She became Animate Randolph. And she taught it to DD and B. Now, whose name can we put there to follow through with that? Malda. And I don't know Malda last week. She's a barber. What did she wear? She's a barber. I mean, the work. I don't know, I think she's incapacitated now. Mm -hmm. But that's the way we can identify. Mm -hmm. Does she go to church? Is she and active? She's incapacitated, I think. She's not too mobile. Well, I just meant that somebody at the church might know where she lives. I don't know. Sure she but that would be so interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been looking for vendors, but we haven't oh, found really? any. We yes. Found any. I just had to think about mm -hmm. it. We heard or about he's, it. He's a number one black vendor. He sold watermelons. He had a cart? A, a wooden cart? He sat on the ground, didn't he? No, I couldn't have. Oh, that's before my time. <laughs> no, I don't know. He probably had a wagon, didn't he? You know, they had a tent. They, they take turns. And no, I can visualize them. They sat on the ground. It was with a quilt on the ground. You know, it was just pathetic, but he did a volume of business. <laughs> now, they were now the M-A-L-D-A. She was saying 
the year and, and, and everything about it. I'm giving you the age because I don't know. Yeah, we're going to need a first name. Now, who was Anna Mae R Randolph? You just mentioned that name in connection. That was the his daughter. Uh, daughter. I think that was his daughter by former marriage before he married. Uh, and Melda is his daughter too. M A L D A, I think, is the way it. Melda, I think. M A L. And is is his last name Quentin or is that his first name? His last name was Quentin. Q U I N T. Okay. If you don't have any of us. Um, is it your memory that he stayed sort of in one spot to sell his watermelons? Uh -huh. On the corner of 6 mm -hmm. and I-35. Okay. Every time I pass there, I can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which corner? Well, north, south, south, south side, east or west of I-35. Our side or the other side? You know, there's a little pack. It was East Avenue. You know, it was in the middle of I-35. Yeah, it was East Avenue then. It wasn't. It, it was mm -hmm. East Avenue, so was right on, in the center of the block. He, that's, that's he was on there. six feet in the, in the middle of the divider from that's East right. Avenue. Oh, he was on the Esplanade? That's right, but there wasn't. They just had quilts and mm -hmm. blankets and tents and things. So you mm -hmm. just go and get your one room. Hmm. She will tell you all. He married Probably. after his first wife died, and his daughter, we called her, she married a Chinaman. They adopted one of her. It's a beautiful story. What year did your um, study start? 1920. Stop. Well, I mean, yeah. what was it? The cut off point? First, I thought start. You said start because it's such a fine difference between start and stop. You were here, but you weren't here, I know. I don't understand um, who to be contacting. We do not know who to contact. There's a problem here on this watermelon. Yeah, one little thing. She says the one with me, I'm trying to figure out what is the most important to get out of that. Beauty shop, she used to work. Yeah, oh, that's why I started with church, trying to see if she her name would be Quentin because it's an American name right now, but if you knew which body shop or which church, you'd have, you'd have something right now you don't have anything. Um, I can't even help you on it. We just have to ask somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe talking to my, my cousin Helen, you just made casually mention this. Someone mentioned someone used to sell watermelon, but she's like a chance to know the other person. She may, she may, she doesn't talk too much, so you have to keep asking keep questions. Asking. Mm -hmm. After you get a story, she'll tell you everything. Mm -hmm. 